Uh, we're back, and this is part one of motor disassembly. Uh, this is one of the, the newer motors that I've gotten. Uh, actually, I've been working on it since January, trying to get it done, and because there's so many other things, just getting raw certification of all the normal motors, and it's taken just way too long. But anyway, this is a, the new 21.5 turn motor uh, used in a lot of on-road stuff. I've just had some requests from both the the left and right coasts and uh, thought that uh, at least have it that way it fills out the line um, if you want to use these this, this will work out well so far they look pretty good but these are just like all the other R4 motors I have that come up apart the same way they go apart the same way um, it's these are the stock spec uh, motors so they look the same uh, as far as from 21.5 on up to the 3.5 uh, winds that I have. But starting is really a very simple. These three screws here on the back is what actually holds the whole structure together. And as I've mentioned before, these screws are all aluminum, 7075 hardened aluminum. Uh, again, I don't charge extra to have to replace those because most motors come with steel in there. It actually takes torque out of the motor. Uh, in some cases, maybe you want to do that, but I try to put power into the motor and let you guys take power out if you want to, but these are all aluminum screws and they come apart very easily. Uh, this is a two millimeter hex wrench and pretty straightforward. Love these MIP wrenches. Although those these aren't really old. Uh, but we had MIPs back in the brush motor days. I think most people uh, still use MIP and buy new. I did. When I got back in the hobby, I bought the uh, this first thing I got in, in tools was uh, these 21.5s. I mean, when I started working on these motors again, I got these MIPs. They, they just work so well. They're so tight. Um, so anyway, got the three screws out. That's the only thing that holds this whole motor together. And I start like this, and if you wiggle this back part up a little bit, like that, and now we have at least part of it apart. Um, if you look down in there closely, you'll see the the uh, that kind of the bronze color. Those are actually the, the copper shims that in there that we use to keep the rotor where we want it. And we'll get to that later. But now. Um, one of the great things too, uh, you know, I love a lot of what Hobby Wing does, but this is a Hobby Wing tool. I made a tool myself in order to do what I'm going to do now, but this is a much superior product, uh, really. But in general, what we're trying to do, I'm, I am making the, keeping the rotor centered so that we can get this out easier. It doesn't score the sides of the rotor when it's coming out, and it allows it to come out much easier. These are aluminum pliers. Again, I'm just trying to keep everything, and out comes the rotor. Again, this is a uh, this is a stock rotor that comes in these motors with 21.5 and, and lower. Uh, it's a C75 125 power products uh, design. That means it's uh, typically these are 12 and a half millimeters outside diameter. Uh, this works well produces great torque in most cases because of the diameter, the inside diameter of the motor. Um, works very well. It has uh, shims here on the end. I'm going to take this one shim off and we'll get that in a minute. I'm going to keep that together. And then lay that rotor there so then on the other end of this rotor here's the other shim on that end. So this one goes on here like this. A couple other little shims. So that's the front side. This is the back side it has shims like that. And that makes the rotating mass inside the brake. So I'm just trying to keep these separate. Keep that in there so it doesn't roll off the table. Okay. Now this is the, what is typically called, this is the stator assembly or the can some people talk about. Um, this is uh, 
Uh, it's called a stator because stator means that it doesn't rotate. This is a non-rotating part of it. And if you look real close down in there, you can see the copper. Uh, the, this is actually the, the, the copper wire that comprises, makes the magnetic field for these uh, motors. Uh, this is, if you'll notice, there are three separate coils. They're called phases. And this is what uh, powers the, the, the motor. This is what the, your electronic speed control controls, is that when these are, get the electricity in order to pull the rotor around. And back to the rotor. This rotor, although you can't actually see it, actually these are two pole motors, which means there's actually two different magnets inside this can. The reason why you don't actually see those is because this is a metal can that goes over top of the, of the, uh, of the magnets. And its purpose in life, way back when they built, first built uh, brushless motors, they just had magnets stuck and glued in there and they had a high incident of those motors of those magnets coming apart basically they just the, the glue came apart so it's part of the evolution of uh, brushless motors power products is most of all the uh, brushless motors nowadays are built this way all the rotors are built with this can so it, it covers up the magnets again it's kind of a safety protection on that keeps everything concentrated inside the deal so uh, typically, we don't have trouble with rotors coming apart nowadays. But inside this, there are two different magnets in here. So this is the reason it's called the two-pole motor. These magnets interacting with the magnetic field in these electric coils in here is what makes the motor rotate. And your electronic speed control uh, knows how to make this uh, rotate, and it's all, all magic. So let's get back to the, the other side of the motor. This is uh, the back side, I call it the non-shaft side, that is the shaft end where you put your pinion on the rope to make your, your car go, the non-shaft side or the timing side. If you look real closely, you'll see that there's a small electronic uh, circuit board in there. And this is how the, your electronic speed control knows where that rotor is because it is a timing issue. If you know anything about automotive engines, uh, that, you know, that there's a lot of timing, that spark inside the, uh, your cylinder has to fire at the proper time or the motor doesn't produce very good power or maybe doesn't even run at all. Well, the same thing with these uh, brushless motors because there's timing involved, as I say, with these three uh, copper wire bundles, these phases that I talked about earlier, the speed control has to know where this rotor is at and this little electronic board, and you'll, if you look real closely at these small little black chips on there, they sense that magnetic field of this rotating rotor. And by when, as the, it rotates through there, the speed control sees where that rotor is at and so it properly, at the proper time, times when that electricity goes to your coil in your stator and this is how the motor becomes makes power and through the electronic speed control we can actually electronically control the timing of the rotor to produce more power which might make more heat for those classes of course that you're allowed to do that in most stock classes we can't make any adjustment to the uh, timing in the motor the so-called blinking mode but in motors and especially in the modified classes, you can adjust the timing when that speed control sends its electric signals to your big coils, to those phases, and makes the rotor rotate. It all happens, the, as I say, the electronic speed control, the ESC, knows where that rotor is because of those three little black chips. It's, it's all magic. That's all we need to know about it. But with that, we can, uh, we can control that. One of the, uh, most of these, uh, all these brushless motors that I've seen, uh, we can make, we're talking about changing the timing. I'm just gonna show that go on the back of this timing cover. There are three black screws. We're just gonna loosen those up. That's a one and a half millimeter. And you can see what happens. Now when I rotate, you can see the electronic speed control. You can see that circuit board rotate. And this is what we're doing when we're changing the timing. 
we're changing the, the relationship of that little, little electronic board in relation to the rest of the motor and this is what adjusts the timing we're just changing that back and forth that's what we're doing mechanically with the, when we're setting the timing inside the motor